Hey guys, and welcome back to Jim's Garage. Are you tired of paying for Office 365 and G Suite? Do you wish there was an open source, free version that you could install on your own infrastructure? Well, I'm happy to say that Nextcloud is your answer. I'm gonna give you a quick overview of what Nextcloud can do for you and how it's gonna solve all your productivity issues. And then I'll talk you through how to deploy this. So heading over to the Nextcloud website, one of the first things that you'll notice is simply the compatibility with various devices. So not only does this have native phone apps, but also everything runs through the web GUI. So it's really easy to use and really convenient. Looking further down the page, we get a sense of all the additional features that Nextcloud has. Not only is it a great place to be able to collaborate with different users, but equally it has VoIP, it has chat, it has email, it has calendar, and a whole lot more courtesy of its app store. Yep, that's right. Anything it doesn't have natively in the application, you can be pretty sure that there's an app that will do it for you. Now, not all of those are free. You might have to pay for them, but typically that functionality is there. Another great thing about Nextcloud, for all you open source fans, is that the source code is available on GitHub. So if you wanna have a look through it, find out what's going on underneath the hood, you can go and do that. All of the core components of Nextcloud are available on here. Obviously the community aspects won't be, but you can have a look at all the features. And heading over to the App Store, there's a wealth of applications here that you can use to enhance and add additional functionality to Nextcloud. One of the ones that's really popular is only Office, which makes Nextcloud a bit like Office 365 or Google Workspace. And you can work collaboratively in real time on documents and format types that you're all familiar with. I'm talking things like Word, Excel, PowerPoint, all of those. And as I mentioned, there are mobile native applications for Nextcloud that again, just enables you to enhance your productivity on the move. That's available on both Android and on iOS. And the applications are great, I've used them for a while. Now in this video, I'm gonna show you how to deploy this on Docker because it's really quick and simple and we can script the installation process using Docker Compose to guarantee that every time we deploy this application, it behaves and is installed as we expect. But if you don't want to go down the Docker route, you can skip the next bit of the video and move on to the end where I'll cover off some of the basic configuration because that part is gonna be the same no matter whether you use Docker or a native install or a VM. So just looking on the website, you can see that there are install guides here for Windows, Mac, and Linux. And also there are different ways in which you can install the server. So Docker images, VMs, etc. When determining how to deploy Nextcloud, there are a couple of things that you need to consider. Certainly if you're considering doing this in a more production environment, those are whether you want to use the included Apache proxy and whether you want to use an external database. So let's get onto the proxy. As it says on screen, you can deploy this using the Apache proxy. So the Apache web server will be deployed when you run that image. And the second one is FPM, where you need to provide an external proxy, i.e. probably one that you're already running. So for us, if you've been following my home lab journey, that would be traffic. The second part to consider is whether you're going to use an external database. Now, there are many reasons why you would want to use an external database, and that largely stems down to performance and scalability. So if you want multiple users using this, an external relational database like MariaDB is gonna be more performant than SQLite. However, for a home lab setup, you're gonna be okay with SQLite. So we're gonna choose a setup where the proxy is bundled and it comes with SQLite it will make it much easier to get started with Nextcloud. If you want to be more adventurous down the road, you can go and do that. But for this video, we're going to keep it simple, go through a basic setup and configuration, and then you can continue that journey if you want. So for this video, I'm going to visit our good old friends at Linux Server. They provide a number of pre-compiled images that are often set up for a more home lab environment, i.e. there are things that are defaultly configured to make life and setup much simpler. Nextcloud can get pretty picky. Things like making sure it understands its external server name, 
making sure that you accept external connections, i.e. you list the proxy, all of those things. Thankfully, with this version, we don't have to worry about those, but do understand that those are beneath the hood and for a production environment, you would want to make sure that you have a clear understanding of what those settings are for obvious security reasons. So looking at the default setup that Linux Server provides, it's pretty simple. We're basically gonna take this and I'm gonna add our proxy to it. So we'll get all of the benefits from our traffic proxy, which we set up earlier in our journey. That's gonna give us a valid SSL certificate so that we know that all of our traffic is encrypted. It's not gonna give us any browser warnings. And if you wanted to, you could expose this to the web and it's gonna be secure. So looking at the config on my GitHub, you can see that I've copied that config over and I've added those traffic labels. Now, if you don't wanna use traffic and you just wanna access it by the IP of your VM and its port, just delete the labels and uncomment the ports. So just quickly running through, you can see that this is really straightforward. We're specifying the image, we're giving it a name, we're giving it a user ID, we're configuring two volumes, one for the config and one for the data. That's where your files will be stored when you use this. And that's pretty much it. If you're using traffic, you'll obviously have to specify that it's on that external proxy network. So let's go ahead and spin this up and see what happens. Okay, so when you've changed and configured your config for your setup, make sure you change your user in your volume mounts to your user on your Docker VM. Otherwise, those files aren't gonna be where you think they are. But once you've configured it, we're ready to run this container. So let's go and see what happens. So once your container's deployed, let's check that it's running. Let's check those logs. I'm gonna do that here in Portainer because it makes life so much easier. If you haven't deployed Portainer, check out my previous video where I show you how to do that. So going into the logs, hopefully there shouldn't be anything bad in there. And as we can see here, everything looks fine. There is one important thing in the logs and it says after completing the web-based installer, restart the next cloud container. So let's go and do the web-based installer now. Hopefully we can access that using the traffic URL that's specified or if you're not using traffic, using the IP and the port that you specified within your Docker Compose file. Voila, it worked, excellent. So let's create our admin account now. Obviously pick something that's secure. I'm gonna pick something easy for this video. And one thing you'll notice is that it's giving you that SQL light warning that I mentioned earlier when considering how to deploy this. Now, as I said before, we don't need to worry about that for a home lab setup, but it is something that you would want to consider if you are thinking about using this for a small medium enterprise, for example. So let's ignore that and continue the installation. Now this might take some time because there's quite a lot going on in the background. Nextcloud is quite a big application. However, when it's finished, it's gonna ask you which additional applications you want to install. Now, don't worry if you just go ahead and install these, you can change it later and vice versa. If you didn't install these, you can always add them later. Plus, as I mentioned, there are a wealth of third-party applications that you can also install if you find the default Nextcloud lacking on something. So I'm gonna hit install all of these applications and as we can see, it's gonna work its way through. So it's gonna add the calendar, which naturally would be quite useful. It's gonna enable contacts, so you can store all of your contacts within Nextcloud and you can kind of get the idea here. If you've got your contacts, and you've got a calendar, and then in the next bit, you've got mail. All of this can start to behave a lot like Outlook does or whatever mail provider you're using. This truly can become a web-based replacement for some of those heavier applications. Nextcloud Office is an interesting one. Now, it's not quite the full Collabora Office suite, which if you don't know, is kind of like what I was talking about before. It's it's a bit of a clone of Office 365 where you can actually work on Microsoft documents and others as though you were using Office 365. Notes is pretty much what it says and it's web-based so you can just fire up your browser and take your notes. And once that's completed, you're gonna be on the welcome page. Now, importantly, as I said before, 
In the logs, it recommends that you restart this once you've completed the web GUI. Now I've validated that it doesn't behave as expected if you click on things now. So for example, if I go up to my user, which isn't even populated, and I try to click on say the apps, it's just gonna hang and spin. So let's do what it says, let's restart that container. You can either do that in Portainer or you can do sudo docker restart nextcloud. So back in Portainer, I'm gonna to go to that container, I'm gonna select it and I'm gonna hit restart. Let's check that it's restarting in the logs. That all looks good. So let's jump back to the web GUI and see if we don't have those errors any longer. Excellent. This looks a lot more like it. So let's see what we can do now in Nextcloud. As you can see, it's showing us all of the applications that are installed either through default or added as extras that we just specified through the web wizard. So now heading back to the home screen, you can see that this looks a lot better now. We've got some files on the left, we've got talk application in the middle, we've got email, and we've got upcoming events. Now, obviously none of this is configured, but to configure it, it's really simple. Let's have a quick look through some of the basic configuration steps. I'm not gonna be able to cover them all, but it's really straightforward and intuitive, and there's a wealth of documentation on the Nextcloud website. One of the key things you'll probably want to have a look at is just heading over to your user account and verifying that those credentials are correct. Simply click in the top right, view your profile, and it's gonna behave like pretty much any of the common applications, Facebook, all of that kind of stuff. You can connect all of your calendars. You can download the applications with simple links here for your mobile devices. Probably the most common use case for Nextcloud is gonna be actually using it to edit and create files. So to do that, simply click on the folder in the top corner. This is gonna show you the root directory and it's gonna have some sample documents in here. So if we click on the Nextcloud manual, which might be quite handy, um, it behaves just like opening a PDF in your web browser. Perfect. If we want to create a new file, again, really simple. Let's click the plus, create a new text file. We can choose a blank or one of the templates. Let's have a look at the template just to make this a bit more interesting. And here you go. You've got a really easy way to do simple documentation in a light and intuitive fashion. Other things you can use Nextcloud for are photo management. And to do that, just click photos in the top corner. You can click on here, you can edit them, you can zoom in, you can do slideshows. It's really handy. Might not be the best solution for storing your photos. Something like Photo Prism, and I'll come on to that in another video, um, might be a better option. But as an all-in-one solution, it's pretty compelling. The talk feature is obviously something you want to do if you have more than one user, but this behaves just like any other web-based chat application. So simply add the users to your next cloud, enable them to have the permissions to talk, and then you can go and have conversations with them through your own self-hosted Nextcloud instance. Email is pretty straightforward. You can go and sync your emails here. Just connect to your email provider and that should sync within Nextcloud. You've also got your contacts and your calendar, as I mentioned earlier. And I'm not gonna tell you how to use those. It should be pretty straightforward. One of the really important aspects of Nextcloud is the App Store. And it's really good. So. Back to here, we can see all the applications that we have installed currently. But the bit you're most interested in is all of the items on the left-hand bar below the featured. So for example, you can customize with some of the customization apps. You simply just download and install. Do bear in mind that some of these aren't free. So they're either subscription-based or a one-off payment. So hopefully you managed to get that up and running and you now have Nextcloud deployed on your own infrastructure, giving you the ability to edit your documents, create notes, talk to people, get your emails, and all of that stuff. There's also a load more advanced features that Nextcloud can have that I simply can't cover in one video. But do go and check out the documentation. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you on the next one.